Good morning to you. Thank you so much for being on here today. Facebook world. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Brock Zevan. I'm a life coach, business coach. I'm a real estate agent. Um, I do real estate coaching as well. And my best job that I get to be is a dad. So uh, excited about being here today. And like I said, if this is your first time being here, thank you so much for taking time this morning. Um, had a great prayer call on Tuesdays. I lead a prayer call and we dive right into. So I'm always coming in hot and heavy on the um, call on Tuesdays. I just finished. So uh, I'm uh, just great to have you. And uh, Tammy, thank you so much for sharing from Greenville, uh, being here this morning. So if this is new to you, please tell us where you're from. We always love new people. And Facebook world, don't be hiding either. All right, Facebook world, you're on here. I see you. You know, tell us, wish us a good morning and um, also share where you're from if this is your first time being on here. So I'm going to read to you a quote today. And then I'm going to go into, so I'm going to prep you right now, everybody. Somebody better have a question for me. We're going to do a little stump the chump today. Um, I felt a little wild just because the rest of the, we got Greg and then Christian, and then I got a guest coming on Friday. So Sydney, I'm looking for a question today. I'm looking for a stump the chump. I'm looking for an objection. So think about it while I'm talking about this. Now, here's the quote this morning. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Okay, let's say it one more time. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Now, I've had to make some decisions in my life that resonated to me when I read this. Okay, a couple things I want you to think about when you're making a decision of who you want to be is the same way or the same challenge that you have. If it's hard to go in a direction, if you don't know who you want to be or become, would you all agree by giving me a thumbs up? If I told you to meet me at this place but I don't give you the address, what do you think your success rate is of meeting me? Do you think that's a pretty valid statement that it, the chances of you meeting me are going to be pretty slim to none if I don't give you the address? Yet in life, Chris, that if I don't know what I want to become, how in the world am I supposed to figure out where I'm supposed to go? And so many times people are like, well, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. That's fine. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. It took me a long period of time, but I went through a transition of understanding, like, what is it out there that I want? Okay. When I don't know I want to be something, is it wise, Pamela, for me just to stay in a very neutral position and not move? Is it safe to say, that if I just hide in my bedroom, close the blinds, and turn the TV on and hide under the covers, that my chances of going in the right direction are probably a little slim. And would you, would you say, Claudia, that if I keep to myself, I don't reach out for help, that the chances of me moving forward in a positive direction, at least growing, are probably slim. Yet many times we do this. It's kind of like, if I don't have the address, wouldn't it be wise for me to say, hey, Christian, um, what's the address you want me to meet me at? I mean, wouldn't that be a great question? What about if I'm going through life and just recently I've been going through a lot of different unique changes and I don't want to say changes, but I've been being introduced to a lot of people. I was just in Nashville. Okay. For those that know my story, I was just, just in Nashville, met very, very high level people. I had my coaching yesterday, last night, once again, high level people I'm having conversations with. Guess what Brock does? Take a guess during the, during the coaching call. Do you think Brock sits there or do you think Brock asks questions? What do you think I'm doing? 
take it, take a guess. Somebody want to take yourself off mute and, and just tell me, do you think I'm asking questions or do you think I'm just sitting there? Questions. Yeah. Asking questions. Definitely questions. Asking <laughs> questions, right? Over the meeting. That <laughs> takes control of the meeting. I did at one point, I got a little nervous that I think my coach was trying to cut me off, which I was like, Oh, I am probably talking too much, but I, I guarantee you. Okay. I've probably was involved in the conversation. There's 16 of us in this coaching group. Okay. I, I, I look at it and I literally had a conversation with my coach on, on Friday when I was in there, I said, coach, I just want you to know, I know there's 16 people in there. Statistically, only two of us are going to make it out and I'm one of them. And I just want to make sure that you knew me. That was our conversation that I had with them. And then he hugged me and he said, God bless you. You are supposed to be here. It's how he made me feel the way I made him feel. And I'm in it. I know who I want to become and I, will, I know where I want to go. Some of you on this call today, some of you on this Facebook today, some of you that are going to watch this and be like, damn, I don't really know that, that that's where I want to go right now. Hell, this guy is a freaking madman. But I am into where I want to be. I'm all in when it comes time for it. My schedule every single day is full to the max of how I'm going to get there. Because at one point, two years from now, somebody's going to say to me, well, Brock, you're pretty lucky. I mean, I, I wish I can get on this stage and do that. And I'm going to be like, two years ago, I need you to go talk to Pamela, Chastity, Amy, Chris, Christian, Claudia, and whoever else I could see on here and say, was I doing this two years ago? And you're going to be like, no, we had to listen to him on Facebook and Zoom. And now we we're able to sit on the front row with him. But he was not in this position. So I challenge you, what is it that you want to do? What address do you need to put in your GPS to go someplace to do something and not say, well, I don't have the address, Brock, so I just st stayed in the driveway. Or better yet, even worse, I just drove around, wasted my time, wasted my gas, and then became a victim and cried and complained and just said, well, Brock, you don't understand. I have no money. Well, I know why you don't have money because you were a dumb tail just driving around aimlessly. All right, I'm done. I get too much into it sometimes. So, guys, figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm, you have to decide who you're going to become. And if you don't, talk to people who can help you. Hence why I'm a life coach, why I'm a business coach, real estate coach, because I help people put them in a direction to say, hey, let's talk about the pros and the cons. Let's talk about where you want to grow. I know you can go. I mean, you proved it. You got this far in life, but now let's grow. Because you're going to go anyways. Let's grow while we go. All right. Now, I prefaced to you, stump the chump before I got on this call. Okay. Facebook world. Facebook world, you're going to have to put your comments in there for me to, to ask. All right. Um, Zoom world, you're going to have to ask the questions. Now, I screwed up the link today. So, I only have eight people right now on, face, on Zoom world. Okay. So, Somebody's got to ask me. I'm taking away. I got it's 827. I can take two questions today. And you better not leave me hanging here. All right, team. Who's got something for me that they want to ask me? Who's got a anything at all? I'll jump on, I guess. I have a question, I guess, when you're talking to expired objection handling. Um, how do you how do you handle the, the whole idea of like, well, what are you going to do different than the other agent? So how are you going to get the job done when they can get it done? They promised me the same thing you're promising me, that sort of thing. Yep. And how many of you, by, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to engage a little bit here. And this is what I, I coach, you know, people when they're speaking, they engage with the audience. How many of you feel by pressing number one on your screen, in the chat box here, feel that you are going to answer the question. And I'm not telling you it's the right or, right or wrong answer. I'm just saying you're going to answer the question by telling them what you're going to do. By pressing one in your chat, one, meaning I'm going to tell them what I'm going to do. 
How many press two? You have no idea. And you're like waiting for me to give you the answer. Mike. Yes. Very good. Christian. The other people, they don't, they don't know yet. They're not, they're not going to respond. Press three. If you don't really care. And you're just like, Oh gosh, I don't know, Brock. Right. So the first thing that people do is when they say, what are you going to do differently for me, Christian? Oh, great question. Let me tell you. Let me tell you everything I'm going to do. Okay. The thing I say to them is this. No, that's a very good question. I completely understand. If you don't mind, what, in, in reference from your past real estate agents, what, what didn't they do that kind of upset you? See, I might be telling them all about what I do about my open houses and I'm the master of, of technology and everything else. And the previous agent says the same exact thing. Well, Brock, the other agent said that too. See, I'm just repeating what the other person already did and they fired the person and got rid of the person because of those two things. But if I ask the question, what is it that they didn't do? Well, Brock, they did, I never talked to them. Well, I completely understand because communication is my number one ingredient. See, now I just answered, I, I got to her answer for what they didn't like. And then I responded to, oh, that's definitely, that's 100%. We're going to, um, communication is number one. I do status calls on Tuesdays. Did they do status calls with you? No, they didn't. Oh, we're going to make sure we can do status calls uh, for you. Would you like two status calls a week or one? Because that's important to them, right? If they say, now get this, guys. Well, they, they didn't do any any open houses. Oh, my gosh. Let me just tell you. I have the open house group. The guy, Mike Kastner, that I worked with, okay? He did 156 of them. How many open houses do you want this weekend? I got a team. I got an organization. I can make sure you got open houses. How many do you want? You want four? Do you want six? What do you got? Oh, my gosh. You can do that many? I certainly can. We can do that many open houses. So the thing is, when they give me an objection or they tell me, what am I going to do differently? Whatever it might be, I quickly revert it because they came in an offensive position now because they're asking me the questions. And then I give statements and then agents like to tell them and they like to give us our resume and how great we are. And we're the best agent in the world. I'm not saying, Christian, you did this. I'm just saying in general, that's the biggest thing is we validate. And Claudia, you're absolutely correct. I listen to them. I ask them. See, the, the first thing is, I no, that's a very good question. So what is it? that they didn't do that kind of got you fired up. See, then they're going to they're gonna be diarrhea of the mouth. They're going to tell me everything that they didn't do. And then here I am making my note. Okay, they didn't like this. They said this. They had no communication there. They, they, they didn't put up a sign right away. The lockbox was hitting my door. I don't know. They're going to tell me so many different things. And I'm going to be like, man, I could miss that. Let me just tell you, you know, a little bit about what we do. And when I come see you, tomorrow, either at four or six, I'm going to elaborate on these things as well. So does that help answer that question, Christian? Yep. Um, what did they not do? Sell my house. So yeah, you know, the, the biggest thing too, is when they say, <clears throat> when they, they didn't sell your house, I always ask them this question. Now, let me ask you this. Are you interested in being back on the expired list? Well, what do you think they're going to say? Well, no. Well, my job is not to put you on that list. Two reasons. One, you don't like it. You already said you don't want to be there. And two, I don't make any money and you don't either. So let's make sure we don't put you back on the expired list and let's get you under the under contract list. You're going to be happier. We're going to make a buyer happier and I'm going to be happier too. My family is going to be happy too because I could put food on the table. Fair enough. Okay. Good question. I got time for one more. Somebody better have something for me. I prefaced you guys on this. Who's got a question for me? Anything at all? And Christian is not allowed to ask me another question, even though he's yawning. Who's got something for me? I'm not moving until, until somebody, we're not moving to team meeting until somebody asks me a question. And unless people are making seven figures, you're going to have to ask me a question. Hi, Brock. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tell Pamela. Me about how to, um, I know it's relational, but 
after a parent dies and you know their house is going to be ready to go. Do you have examples for what you've done? I'm I'm in this um with a neighbor, you know, distant neighbor relationship and so I'm trying to m- figure out how to massage this relationship to help her. Mhm. Help the Absolutely. daughter. Absolutely. And so when you come into that, I've been into that position a couple of times, like literally it could be a withdrawn and I called the withdrawn and I'm immediately immersed into, hello. Hey, how you doing? Brock Zivan, local real estate agent. How can I help you? Oh, can't. I just, my husband died. And so immediately you got to go right into empathy. And it happens like spot. You got to be like, if you're not ready for that objection, it doesn't happen often, but you got to be ready for that objection. And guess what? I still sold their house. It, it didn't. I, I wasn't. First of all, I wasn't trying to get the appointment that day. OK, that won't get you an appointment that day if you're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear, but I can come see you today at four or how just later at six. Like that's not going to work. OK, it's the validation of understanding and sympathizing with them. I'm so sorry to hear. This must be a, a, a tough time for you. How can I help? What can I do? And most of the time they're distraught and their emotions are taking over at a very, very high level. And I need you all to understand that whatever they tell you today might be a totally different answer tomorrow and be prepared for that. And don't say, well, yesterday you told me this. No, we're not playing right or wrong. We're not checking the box. Well, yes, no. Okay. I also understand that doesn't work in relationships either. So don't try to prove like, wait a minute, I took notes on this yesterday and you said this to me. No, I've learned to absorb and to understand the people's feelings. Would you agree on here, guys, that feelings can change from yesterday to today? I proved it last week when I wrote my journal and Kristen asked me the question, why do you, re- how long ago do you reflect? And I said, I reflect 24 hours ago because my emotions changed just in 24 hours. So if they could change with me, they can change with other people. Agree? Yes or yes on that one. So that takes place. So, and when they're even in a higher emotional state, you got to respect that and understand that. No, I completely understand. If you want to wait another day, we can wait another day. Or, Amy, we could just say, hey, I'd like to sell it today. Okay, I'm prepared to sell it today if you like. We don't know. But guess what I do know? I will be prepared no matter what. All right? So um, the, the, how you approach it in a way is literally you have to come from empathy. You have to come from sympathy. You have to validate their feelings and understand what is how are, what can i do to help you you know what is that what other who else is involved in the family and then you start my know well my mom's involved my sister's involved whatever it might be would it be what, should we get them involved in the, in this conversation who else do we need to have involved in this conversation because they might not be able to make good decisions and most of the time when you're in when you're in a loss okay they like to oh i you don't mind that my, my, my sister comes with me? You don't mind that my brother's here with me? No, not at all. I, I'd love to have them. I mean, this is an important decision and, and you're dealing with a lot of emotion right now. So I want to make sure that everybody is helping. It has your best interest. Okay. Um, Stephanie is saying on here, I, once again, she, is, she also agrees that the first month is very, very hard to na- uh, navigate. She's been in the assisted li- living for 25 years. Okay. It is very typical. I, that person who told me her husband died, I didn't sell her house until five months later. Okay. She had to go through her grieving process. I didn't rush it. It went into my pipeline. I sent her a sympathy card. I checked in with her. How can I help you today? Is there anything you need? How are you doing this month? It wasn't, if you could see me, 0% about real estate. It was about how I can help her emotions and how she is feeling. When you go to the real estate side, you're just a salesperson at that point. And so you have to be very cautious when any emotion, somebody breaks up with you, you're dealing with a divorce, you know, your child just went away to college. Like those are emotional decisions and emotional times for people that you can't go at their juggernaut and go after their throat. It's it's, it's a recipe for a disaster. And you got to recognize that 
when you're in that moment to have those type of conversations because people want me to validate and they want me to listen. That's why we have two ears and one mouth. So I hope that helped you out, Pamela, going through that process there. Cool. Very good. Very good. All right, guys. It is 8.39 here, and uh, we are running pretty much a little bit right on time here. So uh, <clears throat> I appreciate those in the Facebook world, Stephanie and Sydney. Thank you for being on here. I know there's other people on, on Facebook world. I see you. Well, I don't really see you, but I can see how many people pop on and pop off. So thank you for being on here today. Guys, on Facebook world, if you liked everything that I said, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, give me a like, put in a comment. There are those that watch the video later. I don't get upset if you do it at the very end as well. Um, if there's anything I could do to help you out in the real estate world, coaching world, business world, let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, help you out and have conversations with you. Um, we are getting ready to put together my uh, <clears throat> my black belt of personalities. So if you're wanting to hear how I convert leads, how I talk to people um, with FISBOs and expireds at a very high level, and to be able to understand the DISC, I'm actually getting certified in the DISC, you know, let me know, reach out to me. We'll get you on the books. We're going to be doing it at the end of September. I'm doing a webinar for 90 minutes, and we're going to dive very, very deep into it. So if you want to dive deeper with me, let me know. Send me up a text message. I'll send you over the link. We're going to be putting it out here very shortly. Um, had to finish up a couple things um, on the flyer, the landing page I'm learning all about. So uh, Facebook world, thank you so much for being on here. 